Have you heard Strega Musica? It's a free compilation on the Make Noise Bandcamp page featuring a whole bunch of artists playing Strega. Some of our favorite artists, in fact. Abul Mogard, Alessandro Cortini, Ben Frost, Katarina Barbieri, Daniel Avery and Manny D, Hiro Kone, Daniel Miller, Tony Rolando, Robert Ike Aubrey Lowe, Juliana Barwick, Kali Malone, Marta Saloni, and even a collaboration between Tony and Alessandro themselves. What could be more Strega than that? Speaking of which, it's been a lot of drums and rhythm with Strega recently on the channel. Not enough echo. Let's try nothing but echo this time. Here are all three echo devices that Make Noise has made. The Echophone. I brought this particular unit from home where it's lived in my system for 10 years. Yeah, it's a little beat up. It still works perfectly. It's dusty but digital, just like its sound. Then we've got Mimeophone and Strega. We're gonna molt one of Mimeophone's outputs so that it goes to Strega's input and then send the other instance to our monitoring along with the other output. Now let's take Strega's modular level output to the Echophone input and we have Echophone to Mimeophone. This creates a loop. You probably know that feedback loops can be dangerous to your ears. Fine control of the level of signals is essential to working with them. I'm going to use Strega's external constant control as my main node for controlling the level in this feedback path. It controls how much of Mimeophone's signal path, or how much of Mimeophone's output, makes it to Strega, and will thereby also provide cumulative control over the overall levels of what travels through the path. We're monitoring Mimeophone for one thing because it outputs in stereo, which I enjoy, but also because it's particularly well suited to handling very high feedback amounts without distorting unpleasantly. I'm gonna use headphones to monitor this time, by the way. I usually listen to the patch through monitor speakers while I film at a low enough level that it won't fight with my voice in the mix. And then I'll bring up the level of the direct input recording when I mix the video. Playing a feedback loop like this, to me, usually feels like it requires the sort of fine listening and attention to detail that I can't do at a, a really low level, so headphones. Now we can use the mix controls on each of these echo circuits to control their relative levels in the loop. Let's start by seeing if we can get some sound in here. Every single change we make to relative levels will also have an effect on the sound downstream. If all mixes are set to dry, then we're likely to get a feedback loop more like what you might encounter with a hot microphone pointing at a speaker on stage. This is an early Echophone with a Vactral in the mix circuit. It doesn't really go totally dry. Now turning up the mix adds in delayed copies of the sound and they don't build up as quickly as when mixes are dry because at each step they are delayed. It takes a bit of time for the delayed copy of each sound, of each bit of sound to make it to the next input. But once any given bit of sound has made it through the full loop, it begins to coincide with the next bit of sound and so forth until we have a bunch of different instances of sound all coexisting together. By setting our various delay times differently, we get a complex set of time relations that we hear all at once. Another thing I like to do is send a slow bipolar modulation signal to the micro rate input on the Mimeophone. I'm using the sum out of maths to do this. 
check out the video layering tones with Mimeophone for more detail on this input and how it works. Suffice it to say that I like the way it subtly enriches the stereo field. And perhaps more importantly for this patch, it keeps the Mimeophone's rate in a constant state of small movement, which will also help in avoiding an excess of feedback buildup. Each of these devices also has its own ways to manipulate the sound that it delays within its own internal feedback path or paths. Strega and Mimeophone both use complex filter networks to create cumulative changes to the brightness or darkness of the echoes. If we have feedback controls turned up, the sound is routed back through each unit at the same time as it is sent on to the next one. Echophone has the capability of placing pitch shifting into the feedback path. This works with unpitched sound as well. The original sound comes in, it's passed on to the mimeophone while also being run through Echophone's pitch shifter. The resulting pitch shifted sound is now passed on to the mimeophone while also being run through the pitch shifter again, and again, and again, in amounts depending on the setting of the feedback control. On its own in the Echophone, this feedback loop tends to create upward or downward spirals of pitch that quickly degrade as they get further from the original. When passed, to the two other delay circuits, it will then come back into the echophone again later on, creating a harmonic wash that is more difficult to discern exact pitches of. Here, let's use Strega tones to demonstrate this a bit. Quasi-tonal wash can be further sculpted by Mimeophone's color and Strega's filter. I also find that because Strega runs multiple feedback paths through multiple delay lines at once, in this context we can do adjustments of the time control that feel like 
tambral adjustments rather than the speeding up, slowing down that they give in a typical lone delay line. And of course, Strega also has the capability to create various flavors of noise, which are particularly good for sculpting with filters. We could also bring in Absorb in a rhythmic fashion using the great output of Mimeophone. We mostly hear this rhythmic shuddering downstream rather than at the very moment of its creation.